Hey, I'm Jared, and this is how to create a complex skin shader. Up to this point, we've hit two of the three main pillars of creating believable skin. The first is the pore level detail, which is probably the least important, but everyone's favorite part of a sculpt. The second is the texturing, which is vital, but the last step, and probably the most important step of bringing everything together, is the shading. Shading is what seals the look and feel of skin. You can ultimately be a master of skin detailing and texturing, but if you can't put it together in a shader to round it all out, you'll have a character that's going to come out looking like it was made of plaster. So we're going to look at some of the utility maps and properties we need to make a strong subsurface scattering shader. So let's jump over to Substance Painter. In the last video, we painted our skin information, but we're going to go ahead and pick up from here. What we're going to do here is paint the utility maps to help sell skin to looking believable. The first map that we're going to look into making is going to be our roughness map. If we look at the way that the skin looks in the engine up to this point, you'll notice that without proper reflections on the surface, the skin can kind of feel like it's made out of plaster, which obviously isn't what we want. The first thing that we want to do when painting our roughness map is to establish an overall base. This is just going to be the base value that we want the whole area of the skin to have. The next area we're going to focus on is the T-zone of the face. This consists of the nose and the forehead region, and a little bit on the lips. For this area, I make it slightly a little bit less rough as I want to simulate some of the oils that are on top of the surface. The next layer is just going to be toning down the roughness just a little bit more, and I'm going to start putting this in areas where the oil is, like the nose and forehead. I also throw this on the lips just to give them a little bit more of a wet feel. The last paint layer I add is to the caruncle and the waterline. This is actually wet, so I turn the roughness down enough to create a little bit of a tighter highlight in this area. The next map that we're going to focus on is going to be the subsurface map. This isn't a necessary map, but I like to have it to have a little bit more control over where the scattering is happening on the face. To get this map started, I pipe in the thickness map, which is a pretty good starting point. Next, I make a few levels adjustments to it because the blacks are going to tell the shader not to scatter, and that's not what I want. I bring everything up to a semi-gray tone. From here, I'll add in a black layer to tone down some of the areas like the lips, nose, and eyelids. These areas may be thin, but I don't want quite as much scatter as I do in areas like the ears. Once I have that done, the next thing I'm going to do is add in a white layer, and this is going to tell the shader where to scatter more. This I'm going to do in the ears and the edges of the nose, just so that I can push it just a little bit further. On top of everything, I throw in a little procedural and tile it just to add a little bit of variation to the surface and how things are scattering. This isn't necessary, but I just want to introduce a little bit more imperfections into the map. The last map we want to make is going to be our cavity map. This map, again, isn't absolutely necessary, but it's going to allow us to get a little bit of a nicer result in the long run. So to do this map, the first thing that we're going to want to do is create a base layer. I'll go ahead and set my value of 1 or white. Next, we're going to create another layer, and we're going to plug in our curvature map into this layer. So as the name of this map entails, we're going to need to start creating our cavities. So with our curvature as a starting point, we're going to add on top of it a levels, and we're going to clamp it down. This map is going to dictate where cavities on the model are, and with that info, it's going to help drive our specular information. Like the scatter map, I also just like to add a procedural over the top just to give a little bit of subtle breakup and imperfection to the surface. Now we're going to go ahead and jump over to Marmoset. A lot of what has been shown prior to this point and even after this point is going to be applicable in most situations for creating a skin shader. I just choose to use Marmoset as I like the ease of use for the software. So in the last video, I showed you how to paint skin which in paint does look pretty good, but you'll notice once we get inside of our engine, the results do look pretty bad. The reason for that is that we have what is probably the most important aspect left to solve, which is going to be setting up the shader. This is really going to make our model feel like skin. So to get things started, let's set up our subsurface scattering first. This part of the shader is going to contribute the most to making the final result actually feel like skin. To enable this, let's come over to our transmission tab and set to subsurface scattering. If you have your scaling set properly, then a value of 1 should work fine. I do tweak the value just a little bit depending on a project to project basis. So the first thing that you'll notice now that we've set up our subsurface scattering is that the model feels pretty waxy. So to make things a little bit easier to visualize, I'm going to turn off the albedo so that we can visualize the subsurface scattering on top of a white shader. 
So to dial in the results a little bit closer to what we want from our subsurface, let's go ahead and take the map that we created and we're gonna plug it into our map slot. Right away, you'll see it no longer feels like the model's made of wax. It feels a little bit more believable, like it's actually made of skin. Now that you have that slotted in, let's turn our albedo back on and we can see the combined results. Overall, it's feeling a lot closer to what we'd expect from skin, but there's a couple more things that we need to tweak and adjust to make it feel quite as believable as we want. The next part of our shader that we're going to set up is going to be our roughness map. The first thing that I'm going to do is just pipe our roughness map into the proper slot. You'll notice that the image that I use looks kind of funny, and that's just because I like to channel pack my images to save uh, how big the file memory is. Because of this, I just need to make sure that the channel is set to the correct channel that I have my roughness map plugged into. So you may think to yourself that, okay, we plugged that part in, now let's move on. Well, no, we're actually going to add on top of this specularity to make it feel a little bit more believable. The first thing that we're going to do with the skin is make sure that we use spec. In the reflectivity tab, I change this to specular, and I like to adjust the color to a little bit more of a blue value than complete white. The last part of the spec that we need to set up from here is going to be our secondary reflections. When you look at skin, it actually reflects two different types of highlights. One is going to be a broad highlight and the other is going to be a tight highlight. So to simulate that, we're going to add in a secondary reflection lobe. To do this, we want to turn on our clear coat reflection, clear coat microsurface, and our clear coat reflectivity. Once I have all the clear coats enabled, I like to set my refractive index to 1.3. The next major piece that we're going to dial in is going to be the roughness for each of these lobes. When doing this, I want one of the lobes to catch the broad, wide highlight, and I want the other to simulate the tighter highlight of the skin. Here you can see the before and after result of what the second lobe contributes to the skin. It doesn't seem like a huge deal, but it does overall make an interesting impact to the realism of skin. Now we have our specular set up, so the final piece of the shader that we're going to set up is going to be the cavity portion. To do this, we're going to go to the occlusion dropdown and we're going to plug in our cavity map into the cavity channel. Right off the bat, the results are rather ugly. The reason for this is because this map is also influencing the diffuse cavity, which is darkening the pores. I'm going to turn this off as it doesn't really seem to help the result much that I'm after. The specular cavity is what we're really going to be concerned with in this portion of the shader. What this part of the shader is doing is it's going to reduce the specular's ability to get inside the pores. I usually like to just make adjustments to the sliders until I find a desirable result. And now we would have what I would consider a pretty completed skin shader. At this point, I would continue to refine depending on a need-by-need -need basis, but overall I feel like we have a pretty good result that hit all of the pillars that we needed to. So hopefully you guys found this helpful. This is more or less the same approach that I would use for any shader when dealing with skin. It is a complex material to understand, but these are sort of the same pillars to help make believable shaders and really sell the skin texturing we painted in the last video. With that said, I just wanted to say thank you guys for the support over the last month or so. I had the goal of hitting a thousand subs before the end of the year, and we made that happen in a fraction of the time. So as a thank you, I wanted to let you guys know that I plan on doing a portfolio review here in the near future. I'm not sure whether I want to do it over live or pre-recorded, but if you have any thoughts, let me know below um, as your opinion on that. So keep an eye out for more details on that. And lastly, if you have any suggestions for things that you'd like to learn in future content, leave it down in the comments below. If you're interested in any other aspects of this character, like texturing or pore detailing, check out my most recent videos. Also, make sure to hit the subscribe button just to see any future videos that I release. And thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.